Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at the storyline, 52 Aftermath, The Four Horsemen. Stay tuned. All right, so 52 Aftermath, The Four Horsemen, is a six-issue miniseries. Uh, currently, I have issues one through four and issue number six. I am missing number five. Um, but this storyline really stuck in my mind uh, since I first read it, mainly because of what happens to the Trinity and Batman specifically. So 52 Aftermath, The Four Horsemen, takes place... Uh, after about eight months after Infinite Crisis, 52 was a year long miniseries from DC Comics. Uh, it involved 52 weeks, the 52 weeks after Infinite Crisis. No Batman, no Superman, no Wonder Woman. All three of them basically took a break from being superheroes because of the mental toll infinite crisis took on them and a lot happened in that time at one point i'm sorry 52 aftermath isn't eight months or eight weeks after or eight months after infinite crisis it's after the return of the trinity so after the end of 52 um sorry i've got the wiki pulled up here um plus the comics and everything it's a little jarring but eight weeks after, or eight months after Infinite Crisis, uh, the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse, the what is known as the Four Ages of Apocalypse, which, according to the wiki here, the Four Ages of Apocalypse, Apocalypse being the planet Apocalypse, in its anguished, bloody morning, their coming was foretold in Book 10, Chapter 7, the Revelation of Apocalypse, of the Bible of Crime. They are Yurd the Unknown, Roga of the Seven Atrocities, Zorm the Desolate, and Azarus the Silent King, representing famine, war, pestilence, and death, respectively. So approximately eight months after Infinite Crisis, um, the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse were sired into Earth. Um, they, they were... Something was opened up and it released them. And they went to Kondak and attacked Kondak, killing Isis and Osiris, which led to Black Adam kicking off 52 Aftermath World War III. Um, this is when Black Adam goes off the deep end and he goes after the ones responsible and it takes the entire Justice League, the Justice Society, all the armies of the world everything to stop him uh we'll get into that another time i only have two issues of that miniseries so i'm not as familiar with it as i am this one but after this after those events uh superman batman and wonder woman come back to heroing uh they go to um Bialya where the aftermath of Black Adam's attack takes place. The The nation is destroyed. Um, so many are dead and everything else. It starts off with Clark Kent um, as in his reporter form uh, covering the story. Bruce Wayne shows up and kind of finds out what's going on, gets all the information from Clark and everything. Wonder Woman is on Oolong Island uh, where Veronica Kale, the the woman who released the Four Horsemen, dealing with that that mess over there, um, she come uh, she comes along and eventually helps out Batman and Superman. But famine attacks in the form of a human being. He possesses a human being and he attacks Superman 
and bites him. Manages to actually break the skin, which shouldn't happen. For whatever reason, whenever these entities possess human beings, they become so much stronger than their original forms. But the original forms can't completely contain them because they're so weak. So anyway, when Famine bites Superman, it becomes infected. And that's a catalyst for what happens in the final issue of the series. But it does, it acts as a kind of tracking beacon for Superman um, when it comes to the Four Horsemen. Now in the second issue, I believe here, uh, this is where it's revealed that Snapper Carr has not only been a um, undercover agent for Checkmate, which is at this time is ran by Mr. Terrific. Uh, he's also known Superman's secret identity for about a year at this point, maybe longer. It, it, it's just a one-off statement, one panel, very quick. You'd probably miss it if you didn't if you didn't take the time to notice it. Uh, but Snapper Card does know that Superman is Clark Kent. It's unclear if he knows about Batman being Bruce Wayne or Wonder Woman being Diana Prince. But we also have death has taken over the bodies of the dead in um, Bialya. And he raises this army to attack the Trinity. This series is actually where... The name Trinity for Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman becomes canonical in the DCU because Lois Lane gives them their name, Trinity, at the very end of the final issue. All this is going on while the Four Horsemen are erecting their new bodies. A combination of biology and uh, machinery to build their new bodies. And unbeknownst to the Trinity they actually unintentionally assist them in finalizing their bodies by uh, Superman takes a huge, huge chunk of ice about the size of an island in an attempt to stop the swarming dead. And when he does this, it actually helps them for whatever reason, somehow it helps them finish their bodies. So they go on the attack and this mini series um, I've already mentioned Snapper Car. It also has Mr. Terrific and it has the Doom Patrol in it. Well, in the final issue, once the bodies of the four horsemen are destroyed, three of the four horsemen anyway, uh, their, their souls decide to possess those that welcome it, welcome them. Um, they're only able to possess those that welcome them. And so... Superman being infected from the bite, he, his body is welcoming pestilence into him. Um, it's not a conscious thing for Superman. It's his body having the infection has basically offered um, home to pestilence. Wonder Woman, uh, being that she is a warrior princess and all this her spirit welcomes war into her and so then veronica kale um she swallows this uh, i'm not quite sure what it was it looks like a jewel or something that is able to imprison the four horsemen and she goes and very quickly within like two pages uh she manages to absorb uh, pestilence, war, or pestilence from Superman, war from Wonder Woman, and death, who is still in his recreated body. Um, and then we get this really cool scene of Batman. And let me read it to you real quick. So, we have the Doom Patrol here. Okay. And this is after death gets absorbed uh, by Veronica Kale, uh, the the machine man. I, I forget the Doom Patrol's name. I'm not well read, read on the Doom Patrol, but he says, that's it, she hugged him to death. And then the doctor says, I suppose that's one way of putting it. And Plastic Girl says, uh, 
hate to be the one to bring this up, but weren't there four of them? Batman comes just walking in and he says, President Ten accounting, accounted for. How soon can she get this thing, this nattering thing out of me? Out of you, says Wonder Woman. Yerd, meaning famine. Superman comes up and he goes, Yerd took you? Tried to. How soon? <laughs> and then Veronica Kale says, uh, she laughs and says, Your hunger greater than Yerd's? Almost funny. Superman's like, hunger? And then there's a back and forth between um, Doom Patrol and Wonder Woman and everything about them being invited. And he goes up to Batman and he says, Superman's infection was enough to open him to Zorm. As for you. And then Batman says, there's more than one kind of hunger. Meaning, Batman's hunger for justice was greater than uh famine's hunger so this makes me wonder if batman's hunger for justice was so great that it overpowered the four horsemen of four horsemen pestilent or famine what would happen if batman got his hands on an orange lantern ring think about that for a minute if his will his hunger for justice is so strong that it is able to overpower one of the four horsemen of apocalypse could he overpower an orange lantern ring uh, of course it avarice isn't exactly the same as hunger um, it's more greed but essentially they're the same thing hunger and greed are two sides of the same coin so to speak so it really makes me wonder what would happen if if Batman got his hands on an orange lantern power ring. We've already seen him with a green lantern ring. Uh, we've seen black lantern Batman. Uh, we've seen white lantern Batman. And yellow lantern Batman, I think. It almost makes me wonder, would Batman be strong enough to hold down the entire emotional spectrum like Kyle Rayner did? Um, overall, I really liked this miniseries. I still need to get number five. It's been missing from my collection, basically, since I found these at uh, my local comic shop, which is now closed down. So I do need to track that down, as well as the rest of the uh, issues for World War III. Uh, very, very good story. There's not much more I can say about it, just that the reason this really stuck to my mind was because of the final pages of the final issue where Batman gets possessed by the horseman famine. It was an amazing scene that shows just how strong Batman's will is and how strong his uh, hunger for justice is. How Superman with all his power and everything was unable to fight off pestilence. How Wonder Woman with all her power, all her strength, was unable to overpower war. But Batman, essentially being the weakest of the three, his hunger and will were so strong that famine was essentially just like a nuisance to him. It, it was like an itch in the back of his brain. And that's it. You know, he... He had no trouble whatsoever just overpowering him. And I would have loved to see what that was like from Famine's perspective. How an insolent, puny mortal could be strong enough to overpower him. Next time, I'm going to try to do a f uh, more of these story review videos. I'm also going to get into some book reviews. I was doing them for a while on my one of my other channels, but I switch that channel over to something else involving mental health. So I'd like to bring those book reviews over here. Um, as you can see, I do a lot of reading. I'd like to review uh, Darcy Coates books, Penelope Douglas, Stephen King, um, Amber Smith, just all these different books because I do a lot of reading. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I, I know this channel started out as kind of a 
comic centered channel um, but it is a place where all geek culture collides and there is no better or bigger geek in the world than a library geek someone who loves to read so yeah I, I think I'm gonna bring book reviews over to the channel and do a lot more of these types of uh, reviews as well so let me know what you thought of the story leave it in the comments below uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out one of these two playlists for more videos just like the one you just watched. I've been Shannon. This has been Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.